in India, you always have to be prepared for things going wrong. It's absolutely crazy. You're extremely brave. Uh, not all of us go on a train journey very often because no, knowing how the conditions can be at times. Try not to use the loose. <laughs> It's a really crazy idea and uh, I hope it works. to have book wallah running over the next three weeks, taking some Australian and, and Indian writers together across southern India is a wonderful thing. It's very much about the journey that we want to have together. It's about collaboration. It's about Australians and Indians talking to each other, creating together, feeling together. I think the concept is fantastic. Um, it's creative in its own right, it markets, but most of all it uh, promotes the stories about us in our words. Um, that is about identity, uh, but it's also using the creative expression to engage with a country that we've had a long association with. But I think the most exciting part is the fusion of the artists that are travelling together. I'll be very interested to see what they write together and how well they travel together. It's those experiences that always lead to the best stories. We had a few things in mind when we set out to choose the races for this tour. The first one was that we wanted races whose work we love. Second thing was people who beyond their own racing knew a huge deal about their own literary culture. So every month they choose uh, a little piece out of Indian literature uh, that goes into the magazine. The uh, final thing that we were looking for with the writers was people with a great sense of humour. So much <laughs> Do you never get worried that you're going to be pigeonholed as that queer Asian writer? And my response was, well, I am that queer Asian writer. I think something that Indian children and Australian children have very strongly is that their imaginations have been colonised by Enid Blyton. And I only believe in one religion, one race, and that's poetry. I often go into remote areas, tribal areas, and I've often found that tribal societies, women, are very free. And sometimes when we put a novel down that we enjoyed very much, when we finished it, uh, we return to life and something is missing. I mean, one, what is missing is the intensity of every moment being used in books, which you cannot have in life. You know? One of the things that you are told when you arrive in India and you are going to be travelling by train is to pack light. <laughs> Don't take too much stuff with you. Now, we've uh, somehow managed to ignore this piece of advice. We've taken <laughs> nearly 300 kilograms of books with us. And uh, in this day and age of the virtual space, the electronic book, that might seem a little perverse, but we believe <laughs> that having physical books is actually the act of having a gift, having the ideas, but the physical presence of those ideas in book form is vital. So we've put together this program whereby we travel from city to city and in each city we find a new literary home. I spent the last six months working with RMIT and Nick Lowe designing and fabricating these bookcases and it was like quite a jump from last week when I was in the workshop completely submerged in this project and covered in dubbin and saddle soap and fixing up the last little details and having such a focused view on these bookcases. But now they're actually going to be used and bitten around. If you were to start your stopwatches and time us in 15 minutes, all of this display, all of these display units, all of these books would be packed away in these cases and picked up and wheeled out the door and ready to catch the next train. So we're, we're proud to have these cases. They are bound in leather and this is not any ordinary leather. This is kangaroo leather. We like to put our national animal to good use. Now one of the, the, the essential aspects of this project is that 
not only are we bringing you our traveling library, we're also leaving it behind. So in each city that we visit, we are donating a complete set of the books in this library to a local library so that when you go home tonight, you know that these books are there for your permanent enjoyment. currently in Shivaji Nagai. I've probably completely botched pronunciation, but we're going to hang out with kids at the Pratham School and read them kids' books. In fact, we're getting a crowd right now. We could probably start reading right now. <laughs> Oh, lovely to meet you. My name is Ben. Hello. <laughs> Heads and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, knees and toes. Knees and toes. So one more, okay, everyone. Okay, like this. One, number one. Everyone. Heads and shoulders, knees and toes. School and all the kids are divided into classes according to need and skills. Right now we're taking a bit of a break so Kirsty can read all sorts of kids' books taken from Australia, mostly Australian themed. We've done some kookaburra laughing. Uh, I think the kids laughed at us when we did it as well. They all want to say hi. Um, but the kids are very friendly and engaged. And what I like is they all seem to want to learn as well, which is great. When we first came to Mumbai and met Sudeep and Chandras and Annie, and they all seemed very charming um, in, their, in their own ways. They were all very open and friendly right from the word go. But of course there's always that anxiety of do they have really you know, peculiar habits that you're really not going to enjoy when you're sleeping six inches away from them and what's it going to be like waking up with them and spending so much intense time with them. Uh, when I was first approached for the Bukola tour. I didn't know what to expect, but I immediately said yes, because I've been to India once before, in about January 2010, to write this book. Um, well, at least one of the chapters for the book, Geisha, set in seven different Asian countries, seven different queer issues, and the last chapter is about India. So I've already, I've already done that whole solo trekking around the country, but I haven't done it with people, and I just love the idea of traveling with, with other writers. A few have travelled India by train, you'll know that if you're not laughing you're going to cry because things don't always go to plan. 
things will not always go to plan on this journey. We're not quite sure what shape of pear shaped that's going to take when things do go wrong, but we're sincerely hoping that the people that we've chosen for this journey will have the sense of humour we believe they have, that they will be able to cope with whatever the tour throws at us. Imagine a little bit like what parents might be like at an arranged marriage. We've chosen these people because on paper we think that they will like each other, that they will get on, that they have stuff in common, but you never know. We've got three and a half weeks of incredibly close confinement together. We're traveling on trains. We're not traveling first class trains. We're not traveling on luxury trains. There are trains that cost 5,000 bucks a day. We're going on the more like the 50 rupees a day. So we're going to be living in each other's pockets. And I think with a bunch of people from having now seen them together for the first time and seeing the dynamic, seeing them playing off each other, fingers crossed that, uh, that, they, that they actually they live up to that. So the reason why there are flies all over <coughs> this box here is because it's been all, all these cases is because it was drenched in fish water. So basically there was a lot of fish on the train and then the ice melted and as a result we all smell fishy, including Sudeep's books here. Call regarding a cab uh, cab driver who's going to bring me my bookcase which I left at your hotel. Can can it happen? You've got my number. How long will it take? We've got a train to catch. Luckily, our train has been delayed. Can you make it happen? There's no one. Okay, okay. Thanks a lot. I'll call you back. Would you like some tea? Take up today? It's wonderful to be free of all our bookcases. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. They're wonderful except for when you carry them. <laughs> She's a very, very helpful older sister type. My <laughs> This is the face of modern Australia. <laughs> for 20 minutes and the real thing comes on. That's right, we're well, just scratching each other's eyes. You know, I'm a slightly deranged middle-aged woman. <laughs> As is evidenced by the shirt on your head. Everybody's much nicer than I anticipated. Oh. <laughs> I haven't been this happy in a long time. <laughs> because I'm having so much fun. Everybody is so nice. <laughs> and sometimes not so nice, but they're still fun. She looks at me.
But one thing I have learned is just how much camaraderie and support is possible between writers, even if they are relative strangers. I definitely hadn't expected that. Over three weeks, we really made very good friends. Everyone was pre-selected uh, to be ready and willing to give that much of themselves. Everybody brought their best selves to the group, and uh, you know. And then you, when you bring that, and you find everyone else responding, you can work up a considerable energy. Uh, in three weeks that uh, is, it's local to you but it's also something between you to share and that was palpable to anybody who saw us uh, at events. While I do have writers who are friends, I, I hadn't actually thought much about being a part of a larger community, a global community almost, of writers who would do and will support each other and uh, that has been a very delightful discovery. I learned actually a terrific sense of camaraderie to feel more confident in presenting my work in other cultures because of the moral support that they offer. Concerned. Um, we left Goa thinking we'd arrive and the cases would be here yesterday morning. They're still not here, it's been over 24 hours. We've got um, the first of our pre-events this evening. There's been so much publicity. We've got two PR companies who've been working on this for the last three weeks. So much media attention built up, camera crews coming in and we don't have cases. It's just ridiculous and we're all really worried because the event's in four hours. The bookcases are in um, a kind of virtual space right now. <laughs> um, we decided that it was a good idea to bring physical books, but uh, Gati, the uh, courier company, has um, virtualized them for us. It's turned it into purely an electronic fiction. Um, we have this uh, courier consignment slip with a barcode, and that's the highest form of Australian literature in India right now. <laughs> You know, there are many novels which are the life of somebody from like birth to death. And what we see uh, in those stories is that it's something that the character himself doesn't see. I need the cases to arrive right now. So how long will you take? How long will you take to, to, to deliver it? It's things that I'll take away from this in a big way was the experience of working with young Indian radians going to, to schools for disadvantaged kids in pretty rough parts of Mumbai and Bangalore or impoverished parts. I don't like to use the word slum because they weren't slummy, they were incredibly together and dynamic communities but very impoverished and the kids were awesome, they were so bright and so 
engaged and engaging and they did a production from a chapter of the Lilliputian which I think was one of the most astonishing productions I've seen in my Ding life. Dong. played Posey Swift, a 13 year old Australian girl and she was a beautiful little singer and then she sang a Bee Gees song as the song that would get her into the theatre troupe and she sang uh, It's Only Words and Words Are All I Have to Steal Your Heart Away and I thought oh that's such a nice thing to say to her, sing to a writer too um, and to sing as a reflection of having read the book so that was pretty special I felt pretty sentimental who likes to write stories where are the writers <laughs> everybody everybody likes to write stories oh some people aren't so sure and who likes to read stories who likes to read books reading stories everybody likes to read books the fabulous thing about speaking to kids in India is you realize how small the gap is culturally too and that the way they relate children there's a universality about talking to children and a and in their responses to you when you start telling a story. So that was very special. It made me feel a lot more confident about see, deeply engaging with other cultures, like finding those little rivulets that lead you into the river of connection. about to launch the Lilliputians here in Chennai which was once Madras which is incredibly exciting I actually have such butterflies because this is the city that the Lilliputians was inspired by which the last third of the book is set in but to be in this bookshop now with this book uh, in its Indian edition um, about to be purchased by the citizens of Chennai is amazing. I came to Chennai in 2007 as an Asia Link literature resident based at the University of Madras. I constructed a historical fiction based on a true story about 29 children from my town of Melbourne who came here in 1909. To re recreate that era about a story that linked my city and this city. Clap three. Two, one, go. Annie Zadi and Benjamin Law are both writers on this book while tour. Interesting to talk to them because they come from a, a different kind of perspective on so many, many issues. It's my pleasure to have them on this program. Annie, before you started this uh, this whole tour, it, you're almost at the end of it now. So 
what um, have you gained or what do you think you know you go away with well i think for one just really good friends okay and i have to say i hadn't expected that i have also gained insights into australian culture into australian mm-hmm. literature because in india we have almost no exposure to australian writers maybe one or two yeah, this is wonderful world of literature that's opened out to you mm-hmm. and i just want to go and find those books to buy those books keep those books right already there's a huge appetite for indian literature really? in australia i mean all the big names you know the the, the yes. sets and ipols and everyone yes. there's already that huge readership but i think as with every country there are blind spots with what you can't get in your own country mm. and i think those contemporary voices especially the young voices like ani la chandra house who haven't yet been published in australia but I, as i read their work i think these voices transport so well overseas and already Sudeep Sen who's the poet who's traveling with us he's been saying that poem that poem i want to meet these people i want to engage with them and will you be a little sad when it's over i am already sad are you really <laughs> i just thought about it while you were talking i was like oh my god it's left? 16 17 18 only 5 days oh my god no all oh, no, right just okay. kidding Supper. Who's who's Judas? Who's gonna betray? Who are we gonna be betrayed to? Uh, uh, eating disorders? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, the vegetable kurma and the coconut. Uh, I'm not writing as intensely through the trip as I thought I might actually because it's so much fun and 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 so much more invigorating to be in conversation with other writers. The whole Von Trapp family vibe has been really fun, but I've actually enjoyed those moments of personal connection with each and every. one of you as well talking about relationships with you and you and you know that's been really fun and making beds like two gay dads together and the feeling of brotherhood and sisterhood which was you know partly forced upon us but that 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 Yeah. Yeah. But fantastic. But 3 weeks later, um we're all parting ways and I really feel like we've become this almost syrupily sickeningly sweet family. We all really like each other and I think we're all feeling a little bit bereft that we're not going to see each other at least not together. Like this possibly ever again. Well, any time you do something new as a writer, the first thing you want to do from the experience is to learn new words and now I know how to say Australia. and i also don't say uh, yes i understand i say gotcha the way nick does so these are my two linguistic uh, advances in 3 weeks which is a lot and actually at the end of anything you know the writing and the arts and all that but what is really really important to me are lifelong friendships that form because through that you can actually uh, achieve and get a lot out uh, so that's been fantastic just to make you know so many friends in such a short time you know i already had some reading of australian literature it was wonderful to meet uh, two representatives in the flesh who sometimes stood for themselves and sometimes stood for the whole country learning through their work learning of worlds through that work i think that 
that is going to inform my work very definitely. No, there's so many memories. I don't know where to start and where to, you know, how much to say, but a lot of it will come out in our writing. Those points of cross-cultural connection where Australia and India are knitted as we were on this trip. You know, that, that sort of knitting of two cultures that you, is, to me, is the best thing about the book while I That's the end of the book holler tour. Um, the family's being split up. It's like someone's dropped a bomb on the Von Trapp family. But yeah, we are finishing. I think the van's outside and they're waving at us. Uh, sad to leave, but hey, I had a fabulous time. It is time to go. But I don't know want to. <laughs>